Hi everyone, welcome to our sixth and final pattern of the Potholders Galore Crochet Along. We did it! You guys have been amazing so far, I've loved seeing all of your projects and I can't wait to see some more. Today's pattern is the Afternoon Tea Potholder which uses the smock stitch. This is a beautiful stitch but it is considered an intermediate level pattern. One more thing to mention, this potholder is very thick because of the overlapping stitches this pot holder is about one inch thick so I recommend using a thinner softer and more flexible cotton yarn for this project it will make it so much easier to crochet the first thing that we're gonna do is make a slip knot place it on our hook and tighten it up Now chain 31. If you'd like to customize the size of your pot holder, there are instructions linked in the description box below. In the second chain from the hook, make two single crochets, all into that same chain. Into the next chain, we are going to make one single crochet, and we are going to do that all the way across. So making one single crochet in each chain. In the last chain, we are going to make three single crochets, and this makes our first corner. Now we are going to rotate our work so that we are working along the bottom of the chain and we're going to go into the next chain and make one single crochet. And we are going to do this all the way across working one single crochet into the bottom of each chain. In the last chain, which is actually our first chain of the round, we are going to make one single crochet and that finishes off our corner because we've already made two other single crochets. To end the round, we are going to slip stitch into the first stitch of round one and then we are going to mark the second stitch of round one with a stitch marker because this is going to be our final stitch of round two. Turn your work and chain one. We are going to make a single crochet into that same stitch that you made your slip stitch into and that's our first stitch. Into the next stitch we are going to make a single crochet and we are going to do this all the way around working one single crochet into each stitch. Get to the stitch marker, remove it and we are going to work one single crochet into that last stitch of round two, make a slip stitch into the first stitch of round two, and then we are going to mark the second stitch with our stitch marker, and that is going to be the last stitch of round three. To start round three, turn your work and chain one. We are going to make a spike stitch going two rows below. So we're going to count two single crochets down. We're going to insert our hook underneath that second single crochet going into that chain and we're going to draw up a loop to the height of our current row, yarn over and pull through both loops to complete our single crochet. Into the next stitch we're going to make a regular single crochet and into the next stitch going two rows below underneath that second single crochet we're going to make a spike stitch which is basically a long single crochet. We are going to do this all the way around alternating between a single crochet in one stitch followed by a spike stitch work two rows below in the next stitch. When you get to the corner, we are going to continue as normal, alternating between a spike stitch and a single crochet. Now 
You know that you've done this correctly if your spike stitches on the bottom line up with your spike stitches on the top. Remove your stitch marker and we are going to make a single crochet in the last stitch of round 3. You've done this correctly if your spike stitches line up on either side. Now we are going to slip stitch into the first stitch of round 3 and we are going to mark the second stitch with our stitch marker. To start round 4, turn your work and chain 1. We are going to make a single crochet into the same stitch that we made our slip stitch into. And now into the next stitch, we are going to make a single crochet two together. So we are going to insert our hook underneath that right leg of the spike stitch and underneath the left leg of the next spike stitch. Yarn over and draw up a loop. So you have two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through both loops and that completes our single crochet. Into the next stitch we are going to make a regular single crochet. Now we are going to make a single crochet two together by inserting our hook underneath the right leg of the first spike stitch and the left leg of the second spike stitch, yarning over and drawing through both loops on our hook to complete our single crochet. So we're going to do this all the way around, alternating between a single crochet and a single crochet two together. You know that you've done this correctly if your single crochets are made into your spike stitches and your single crochets two together are done above the single crochet. We are going to continue on as normal around the corners, working a single crochet two together and a single crochet into each spike stitch. Our last stitch of round four is going to be a single crochet two together where we're going to join the last two spike stitches. Into the first stitch of the round, we are going to make a slip stitch. And then we are going to mark the second stitch of the round with our stitch marker. For round five, we are going to turn our work and chain one. Into the same stitch that we made our slip stitch into, we are going to single crochet. Going two rows below, we are going to make a spike stitch. You should notice that your spike stitch is right beside the spike stitch from round three. Into the next stitch, we're going to make a single crochet. Going two rows below, underneath that single crochet, we are going to make a spike stitch. Insert your hook and looking on the back side, we are going to make sure that our loop falls between those two spike stitches in that triangle. Single crochet in the next stitch. And we're going to make a spike stitch going two rows below. So underneath that second single crochet, make sure that your hook is in the correct position on the back side between the triangles and make your spike stitch. We are going to do this all the way around, alternating between a single crochet and a spike stitch. You know that you've done this correctly if your spike stitches appear beside the spike stitch from round three, and if your single crochets are on top of just one single crochet from round four. This is the front side of our work, and this is the back side. Our spike stitches have fallen in that triangle or the space between our two spike stitches. We are going to continue crocheting as normal around the corner. The only difference is that our spike stitches are going to be a little tighter around these sections, so it is going to be a little trickier to position them, but take your time and it'll turn out just fine.
The last stitch of the round is going to be a spike stitch. Make a slip stitch into the first stitch of round 5 and then mark your second stitch with a stitch marker. To start round 6, turn your work and chain 1. We are going to start by single crocheting 2 together, so going underneath the right leg of the last spike stitch and the left leg of the first spike stitch, we're going to make a single crochet, single crochet into the spike stitch, then make a single crochet 2 together combining the 2 spike stitches and single crochet in the next stitch. So we are going to alternate between a single crochet worked into the spike stitches and a single crochet two together worked above a single crochet from the previous round. You are going to do this all the way around. We are going to end round 6 with a single crochet into the last stitch. Slip stitch into the first stitch of the round and we are going to mark the second stitch with our stitch marker. After a few rounds, this is what our pot holder will be looking like. It starts to look like a very thick pouch. I'm going to show you a trick for counting your rounds. Flip your pot holder so that the spike stitches are facing you, and we are going to start with that first spike stitch that represents round three, and then every spike stitch after adds an extra two rounds. So the next spike stitch will be round five, the next one round seven, round nine, 11, and so on. We are gonna fasten off by removing our stitch marker and we are gonna make a slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. Pull up to create a really long tail, approximately 12 inches for seaming your pot holder, then tighten it up. To fold your pot holder, grab each corner and gently push them down into the center to create a square that meets on a diagonal. All that's left to do is seam our pot holder closed and add a chain circle. So this is done the same way as week one's fairy dust pot holder. So I'm going to direct you to the video tutorial for week one. There are timestamps included in the video to help you skip to the parts that you need. I know this pot holder was a bit of a challenge, but thank you guys so much for participating in this crochet along with me. It has meant so much. I've had a blast and I hope you have too. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>